Welcome back to Frankly Speaking here on WYDC-TV Big Fox. I'm your host, Frank Akam. We're broadcasting from the Hesselson studio. And joining me on Zoom this morning is Kelly Mormon. She's a suicide prevention coordinator lead at Finger Lakes VA. Thanks so much for being on the show, first and foremost. Sure. Thank you so much for having us. Well, this is important having you on because many may not realize that September is Suicide Prevention Month. Mm -hmm. So when you when you talk about Suicide Prevention Month in the Finger Lakes VA, what does that mean for you? Well, certainly, I mean it's it, it's not just one month for us that we're right. in this field, but um, you know, Suicide Prevention Month is really bringing about the awareness, um, really targeting every area that we can possibly get to in the month of September mm -hmm. to bring that awareness out to everybody um, and to let them know how they can help and that you don't have to be a trained clinician mm -hmm. to help somebody and possibly save a life. That it can be something as simple as asking someone how they're doing or asking to go get a cup of coffee. Um, you know, just check again, you know, like but, we hear about buddy checks all the time. Sure. Well, um, so that's interesting. I hadn't thought about that because we're going to talk about some of the programs you offer, but I was going to ask, you know, someone like me uh, who didn't serve, how can we help? So it really is just being <laughs> friendly in a way. Yeah, really just, just checking in and, you know, checking on your neighbor, checking on your friend, um, checking on your buddy, you know, if, certainly if you did serve, checking with those that you served with, if you're still in contact with them, sure. but checking in on your best friends, your family members, your coworkers, your colleagues, your neighbors. Um, could even be just a smile in the grocery store, yeah, honestly, you, right. for someone that you don't know. That could be just all they needed, you know? Yeah. Wow. It's pretty sad we have to tell people not to be grumpy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be friendly. But no, I think that exactly. I, it's great points. Uh, now, how are some of the ways that you're spreading awareness about this? Um, well, we across Fair Lakes, we're doing, I mean, certainly we're out in the community just about, I mean, our kind of running joke is we'll go anywhere and everywhere they let us go to talk about sure. this. Um, but we're out at, you know, local parks, at fairs, and oh, okay. um, we have a walk that we're doing just among the staff, really, but about anybody that wants to join us on all of the campuses um, for Suicide Prevention Month on the 23rd to raise awareness. We're at motorcycle rides. We're at... Um, like sportsman's Anything. raffles anywhere really <laughs> yes. that we can go so well that's great because it is so important and it's nice to know that we can all help uh but let's talk about some of the programs that you offer for those that are in need certainly i mean we do um we have our outpatient clinic mm -hmm. um and those are you know we have several of them mm -hmm. actually you know rochester canandaigua bath elmira um you know wellsboro we have many of them across the area that we people can walk into um, anytime that they're open if they need you know help um, we have our we actually have now our compact act program so if a veteran is having thoughts of suicide they can go into any hospital the ho community hospital doesn't have to be a VA hospital um, and our team will get notified oh, and if it's you know if they're in that urgent suicidal crisis it's likely that that will be paid for by the VA oh. so they're recognizing that you know it's, it's you don't have to worry about the cost, basically. Take that off the table if you're having sure. those thoughts of suicide. Um, we have you know, inpatient facilities that we partner with in Syracuse and Buffalo, too, if someone does need longer-term inpatient mental health care. But we have, um, we have our dom domiciliary in Bath um, for those veterans that may need some help getting through mental health and substance abuse struggles or housing issues, all of those things kind of combined, too. So. Um, those are just a couple. <laughs> well, yeah. Wow. But, yeah. But you hit on such an important point, especially when you're talking about going into really any uh, medical facility. It in no way should ever be about the cost if you're Correct. seeking help. So yeah. how important is that program? It's. I mean, it's huge. Yeah. It, it rolled out um, just this past year, actually, so a nation, nationwide. So oh. it's been a great thing for, for veterans to kind of know, I think. And certainly our, our compact tech social worker has been getting out and spreading the word to all the local hospitals too. Mm -hmm. And I think the hospitals are happy to take, you know, yeah. to let veterans know that as well, um, you know, and to partner. And then it puts that link too. So if they weren't engaged with VA care before, mm -hmm. maybe we can get them enrolled in VA care too. Because we do know that our vets that are um, working with someone through the, the Veterans Health Administration are more likely to have, you know, have that connection. They're seeing other veterans. Some of our staff here are veterans themselves right. across all the areas too. So they, you know, and we're, we're trained. I mean, we know, we know about military culture. We know about, right. you know, certain things that veterans are experiencing that maybe 
you know, the general public aren't, some of the additional stressors that they've been through. And I think it's interesting, and I've heard this been said numerous times in the past, that vets always look to help other vets, but they don't always look out for themselves, right? Have you found that to be the case? Yeah, it can be. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I always go back to, you know, my grandfather was Navy, and he was always told, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Sure. Um, and unfortunately, that's kind of traveled through. We're trying to change that mm -hmm. in the culture, you know, change that whole culture that it's okay to talk about things, and it's not a sign of weakness right. um, to reach out for help. So we're, we're really trying to change that through. But, yes, typically peer-to-peer -peer has a very strong connection, which is why we do have peer supports, mm -hmm. and we do – try to hire um, those that are veterans themselves to, right. to, to work with other veterans. So, Do you think, I know this has been a battle with uh, so many different groups that I've talked to, not just for veterans, but in general, where there's a stigma, not just in the military kind of code, but a stigma in seeking help? Yeah, I mean, there there is that stigma. I mean, it, it is across the board, certainly, yeah. Um, yeah. mental health, but yes, it is very strong and certainly our military and a lot of our first responders as well. Exactly. Um, you know, police, firemen, EMTs too. But um, so, yeah, we do, We like I said, we are trying to change that culture mm -hmm. just to get it to not be something right. that's a sign of weakness. Like, it's okay it, to ask for mental health. It, exactly. I mean, I will say I do think one good thing that came out of the whole COVID thing right. was people started checking in with people right. and checking for mental health. Yeah. So if there was a good thing that came out of that, it's that maybe now we're recognizing that mental health should be treated just like regular health. Has anybody ever told you you have yeah. a very positive attitude? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you we're find not afraid to ask about yeah. a heart attack history or right? diabetes. Why are we afraid to ask yeah. about depression or bipolar or trauma mm. history or anything? You yeah. know? No, I, I totally agree in that. I know you try to raise awareness, to use that term again, that there is no stigma involved anymore. That going back to your point, and I do like that you found a silver lining in COVID, but uh, <laughs> that, that, that COVID opened up our eyes to a lot of things that perhaps in the past would have been frowned upon, and now you're saying, no, we all went through a lot, and, and especially those who served went through a lot in their whole careers. It's not, there's no shame whatsoever in seeking help. So I'm, I'm glad that you're raising awareness on that. Have you found there are other obstacles that you face when dealing with getting those that need help, help? I mean, certainly the, the biggest hurdle is getting them to, you know, ad, admit, if you will, or to reach out for help. Sure. Um, and sometimes that takes the families um, trying to, you know, say, hey, something's different, like you're not the same anymore, or something's changed even since you've been back home. Sure. Um, and there's a program called, you know, Coaching Into Care. Um, that, that family members and close friends can go and look at to, right. to, to learn about how to talk to their veteran um, about what's going on and how to help them get help. Um, I mean, that's the big thing. Sometimes, certainly, it's transportation issues. Okay. So we always try to bridge that gap, certainly in our outlying areas, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, many of our, you know, our veterans have transportation issues. Either they don't drive or don't have a car or, or it's, it's a long distance. So trying to bridge that gap or working with community partners if we need to so for something that's a lot closer so um you know working with our dav and sure. any kind of coalitions and things like that that we can do to get to get people where they need to be now one thing i know that you offer help as well is to to families correct yeah because that's got to be an extra level of stress on them as well with the worry and the and the stress of their loved one going through so much yeah I mean, like I said, we have the coaching into care program, which is kind of online, just trying to get, mm -hmm. teach families or help families on how to talk to their veteran about coming in for help. But we can certainly do, you know, we certainly like to involve the families when we're doing like safety planning and things. We want the family involvement. Sure. We want them to know, we want the veteran to know that they're vested too, yeah. and that it's not just them and they're not alone, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, part of our safety planning is we ask who are your close family or friends that you're going to reach out to. Yeah. Um, you know, so certainly having them vested in that too. We do have marriage and family counseling here as well. Okay. So that is another option that we can do if things have been kind of tight, you know, tense around the home with yeah. things going on with sure. mental, not only mental health, but even transitioning back from sure. active duty too. Um, you know, we have our M2VA program too that helps with vets that are transferring back into um, regular culture, if you will, <laughs> but coming back home right. after being away for any period of time. So. 
So if someone is watching this and they feel that, okay, I need help or I want to find out more about these programs you're talking about or I'm a family member that wants to find out more, what's the best way to do all that to get all the information they need? I mean, they can certainly reach out to, to us here at the VA, um, any of the suicide prevention coordinators. We are happy to help with that as well. Um, there is also on va.gov um, slash reach, there's a whole program about, um, there's a whole website actually about how you can help um, what the programs are that are going on, how can I, you know, get involved. Coaching in the care, like I mentioned, is another one that they can go on and look at to see how they, yeah. they help, um, how they can help talk to their veteran too. Sure. But yeah, they, and they can always, if there's, I mean, if there's any concern at all about a veteran, it doesn't, a family member can call the veterans crisis line as well. Okay. And they're there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Certainly, if they're in, you know, the throes of attempting to hurt themselves, and we say nine one one, of course, to a hospital immediately. But mm -hmm. um, if they're having some of those thoughts, or they're struggling, or they're, you know, in some sort of mental health crisis, or you know, very depressed, or anything like that, you can certainly call nine eight eight and press one any anytime, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Okay. Well, I Kelly, mean, the th crisis line is going to want to talk to the family not only to the family member, they're going to want oh. to try and talk to the veteran as well, obviously. Of course. But of course. Could you give that number again? What is it? 988. Okay. And then veterans press one to reach the veterans crisis line. All right. Well, Kelly, thanks so much for being on the show this morning. Absolutely. This yeah, is important. Thank you for having well, us. it's an important message. And anytime, anytime you want to come back on, it doesn't have to be September. Okay. All right. All right. We'll <laughs> be right. Take you up on that. Uh, please do. All right. We'll be right back with frankly speaking. Stay with us.